Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Simon, for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to present the Oakland Transport Database Operation Manual. It's known as AT DOM. Uh, before I will uh, talk about the uh, Oakland Transport Database Operation Manual, I would like to give you a very brief introduction about Oakland Transport. Uh, some of you may know, on 1st of November 2010, Oakland Council established by combining seven local government organizations plus Oakland Regional Council. You can see those seven <coughs> councils plus Oakland Regional Council. Under Oakland Council, seven council control organizations are functioning today. Oakland Transport is one of the council control organizations. A RAM system was uh, used by those legacy council as an inventory for their Roading assets. These seven RAM databases were merged to form a single database. Today, Oakland Transport manages this single unique database. It includes approximately 7,000 kilometers of carriage valence and associated assets. Today, we want to maintain consistency across the Oakland region for data collection, data entry, and data management. That is the reason we have developed this Oakland Transport Database Operation Manual. It provides procedures, policies for data collection, data entry, and data management. Also, it specifies fields and tables to be populated. For the phase one of this uh, Oakland Transport Database Operation Manual, we have addressed 10 key tables, starting from carriageway, carriageway surfacing, and up to traffic and loading. I want to mention here, when we started to develop this operation manual, Oakland Transport was using 2008 RAM version. From last Monday, we started to use 2011 RAM version. As you know, there are some differences between these two versions. That's a good example, traffic table and loading table. So this presentation uh, is, I, I have done the first part of this presentation, and Royce will continue the second part of uh, presentation. Before I will hand over the presentation to Royce, I would like to appreciate the assistance given by Opus to develop this uh, operation manual. Also, Becca, they have given the feedback for the draft version. Also, NSTA, they have given assistance to use their uh, manuals to develop this one. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Ranjit. Um, well, it's been, a, been quite an honour, I guess, to be get involved in this project because um, since I started with Opus 13 odd, year, <coughs> 13 odd years ago, which is a bit embarrassing to say, um, a lot of time during that 13 years I've been involved in data collection um, and various aspects of information management. Um, and a lots, a lots of information that I'd collected 
um, from all my experiences with that had never been sort of captured in one place. So this project was a, um, a really good forum, I guess, for capturing that information and getting it into a document which suited the needs of Auckland Transport and I'd like to think will eventually get rolled out and suit the needs of everybody else. It's certainly a, a document, in my view, that is missing. Um, it will go a long way towards um, filling some of the holes and the gaps of the data, the consistency of the data. So just in terms of what we looked at and, uh, and when we went through this process is, I guess the key three things we wanted to focus on is what is collected, so that's defining what data it is that we actually want to get our hands on. Um, we wanted to put some context around the data, so why are we collecting it, not just collecting it because the, um, the uh, appendix three in the Shadow Massive Register says those shall collect it, but we wanted to put some context around it. And then I guess probably the most important thing for those guys that are out there collecting the data is how is it collected, because there's a few variances and various ways of picking things up. So in terms of what is collected, we documented our thoughts in, uh, in a data dictionary, uh, which is similar to um, Appendix 3 of Shadong. Uh, and it defines, in our view, what we thought would be good compulsory fields. So what, what data is necessary for our overall asset management practices. Um, and then also we identified some fields which are not compulsory but potentially optional or, um, or conditional on some other um, uh, aspects being met. Uh, other conditions being met, so we, we, we've highlighted all of that. And the whole idea, I guess, of, of data being collected is to get that consistency. So you take seven RAN databases, mash them together, lots of inconsistency. So the idea of this, and that was shown up in Mike's um, uh, presentation at 9 o'clock this morning, was to make sure that moving forward we can start ironing out some of those inconsistencies through good definition around what it is that we're collecting. Um, the other thing we looked at, which we thought was important, was trying to put some context around why we're collecting this data. So that's sort of going into a little bit more along the lines of what we're going to use the data for. So if you can appreciate that, well, I'm not just collecting the data for the sake of getting into the asset register, we're using it for valuations, uh, we're using it for root data sheets, high information sheets, knowing what the end use is, um, it gives you a little bit more buy into the process, uh, which is really good. As part of that, we thought we'd also outline the responsibilities of all the suppliers that are contributing towards populating the um, Auckland Transport RAN database from high speed data collectors through developers, um, through consultants, through contractors, um, making sure that they sort of understood their role of the big picture as well. Uh, probably the most important thing, and this is where I spent quite a few late nights faffing about trying to work out how best to, um, how best to sort of illustrate this, is how we collect the data. So, this is based on all the experience I've got out in the field, dodging bloody logging trucks on the state highway. Um, trying to accurately collect RAN data. Um, so we've documented that. Greg was instrumental in feeding into this as well, um, along with uh, some other assistance that we got. Um, and we've got now some diagrams sort of explaining some of the fields, um, explaining some of the conventions, uh, and just trying to sort of help everyone understand so that when we go to audit someone who's picked up some data, we've got a base point to measure them on. Because at the moment I think we don't really have that, so it's easy to run around shooting holes in everybody else's data, but without some sort of firm um, round rules, conditions around how data should be collected, I think we're sort of um, wasting our time a wee bit doing that. Um, so the idea is to improve that consistency, completeness and quality. That'll help with benchmarking, which Michelle touched on earlier. Um, in my view, and I think we're going to head down this way, it needs to be supported by training and certification. So it's one thing to have a manual, but if we can sort of sort of uh, educate the people that are involved in this, I think that that's, will ultimately give us the result that we're after, which is uh, good, accurate, consistent data. Um, we've also got some LRMS referencing information in there as well. Um, obviously, we're, we're trying to operate in a spatial and linear environment. Sort of, we don't want to do the NovaPay system and go straight to the spatial system without perhaps feeling our way into it first, although there's some good advances being made in the area. So, lo local authorities don't have the benefit of KPEGs and route stations and all that sort of thing, but um, we have got an LRMS section in the document which talks about how the carriage table set up. Uh, nodes and that sort of thing, how you treat a cul-de-sac, hammerhead roundabout, all those sorts of features, that typical features that you'd find in an urban, uh, urban environment. So there's still a bit of work to do. Um, 
Obviously, we need to drag what we've done from RAM 2008 into RAM 2011. Perhaps we need to be thinking what's in RAM, 2000 and, oh, RAM 6 before we do that, so we can future-proof some of this work. Um, we need to look at some of the other tables, signs, uh, pavement layer, various other tables that Auckland Transport are currently populating, but we haven't uh, included in Phase 1. Um, we'd ultimately like to make the document web-based, so it's easy to access and get into. Dennis has made some headways around how we might do that. Um, and then obviously we talked about the training and certification um, as per ETA. So it's really good to sort of stand up here, having stood up here a year ago and talked about, oh yeah, we're going to do this database operations, man, it's going to be the next big thing. And to stand here and say, well, we've actually finished the first phase of it. And, that, and it's been reviewed by Beckers and uh, they've made some feedback, some constructive feedback to us, which we've incorporated. Um, so that's really positive. I guess the other thing we need to do from here too is perhaps have a think about some recreation and amongst all this database, um, database management and information management. So uh, just to end on, on that, I've got some acknowledgements here, which Ranjit's pretty much covered anyway. Um, but yeah, so I, my personal acknowledgements, I guess, is to Greg and his team up in the Manukau office and also to Beckers for their review of the document before we send it out to the wire industry. And of course, Auckland Transport for supporting this and, and seeing the need for it, which is great.